So what exactly do I mean by testable JavaScript? In the simplest terms, I mean JavaScript that's going to enable you to find bugs in your code. Testable JavaScript is simply being able to tell whether the code you've built with your bare hands is any good, whether it's in the client or on the server. This ability to test your code means that as you go forward, you can have a level of confidence in the quality of the code that you're not touching. So this is not just about the quality of code that you deliver to the client or that you deliver in the first run of a production website. It is the quality of the code that you're going to have to live with for the next six months, six years, or 16 years. Instead of having to go back and refactor the entire set of code base over and over again, knowing that you have some level of quality of code, you know that some lower level elements or some modules or some components you're using don't need to be touched in order to change characteristics of a system, whether that's adding features or improving features. This means we don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater every time we decide to reinvent or to add new features or to deliver better experiences to the people that use our software. In many websites today, you're going to see a lot of code like this. It's using jQuery, it's using event handlers, and trying to do a bunch of code just to get it to work. In many ways, this is the culprit of untestable code. Now, some people will attempt to make testable code by simply wrapping all of their code that looks like this into modules or inside of self-executing anonymous functions and think, well, I'm not in the global scope anymore. I think I'm modularized, but I'm still writing code like this. And this is a big part of what makes your code untestable. The problem is that using ad hoc JavaScript, especially jQuery style DOM specific JavaScript, means it is very difficult to separate those concerns. And if you don't separate those concerns, the only kind of testing you can do is through the UI. All the code within that handler can only be executed when someone fires that handler, whether that handler is simply a click event on a button or whether it's a hover event on a menu. There's going to simply be one way to get at that code, and that is through the UI. This is the thing you want to avoid. Let's see why looking at this code makes it difficult. This is a simple save button handler, and it's doing some different work. It's putting together a trip, storing some information, and then sending it up to the server. The problem is we start this entire operation with an anonymous function. And anonymous functions aren't bad in themselves, but they're untestable. I can't call this function. It is useful only within this handler. There is no way to break out what this function does and run tests against it. And in many cases, you're going to have nested anonymous functions, one anonymous function inside of another, inside of another, inside of another, meaning that it's even more difficult to get at these nuggets of code that I want to see whether they do what they're expected to do. We also have the problem of side effects. We have some global or closured element here called a trip that we're changing data about. We're setting the name of this global or closured trip variable, and we're creating a side effect. And so being able to test that this object somewhere outside the scope of the code we're trying to test is being changed becomes difficult. We have business rules directly in the event handlers. This is really common where you're going to want to make sure that certain things happen based on some rules. But if the rules are embedded inside the UI code, there's no way to test them. And finally, mixing in navigation is going to make it even more difficult. Because as we're trying to test this, we can't test for either of these operations being executed successfully because we're changing the scope of our website. We're telling it, oh, go to the home page again and pop up a dialogue and writing tests against that mix of UI code, business logic, data access code, all in this one anonymous place makes it impossible to test.